So TLDR, guys, what do you need to know about bracelets? If you know how much combat stats you need, you're already one step ahead. Before bracelets come out, you should study your class, your spec, and have a general idea how much combat stats you want. Now, to talk about the general introduction of bracers. Bracers, we're gonna get with the relic ones. Now, look at that, chat. Why would someone who spends more money on bracelets than any English-speaking Lost Ark content creator combined, why would I call it the worst system? Because I know. I've been there i spent thousands on this shit that's why i call it the worst system in the game so here let's see we're gonna do relic two free slots and then we're gonna go specialization and crit let's do perfect bracelets ah uh, none exist obviously so we're gonna do 95 above all right as you can see there's only one in the entire auction house at 280k so someone asked me zeos how much are bracelets in korea first of all i want to tell you guys in korea there is a bracelet boom let me explain that so history about bracers we're at boom phase two what is boom number two boom number one was when a famous theory crafter in korea made a video about bracelets before then most people that you saw like whales included had shitty ass bracelets for example i'm not saying foss is a whale but when we did a con with foss his bracelet was trash it's literally something that you would pick up from a chaos dungeon that nobody would even list in the auction house we joked about that he went to town and cut one immediately and it was six percent already better than what he had before just one bracelet he bought six percent damage increase those were the days when they knew about 97 they knew about level 10 gems 100 quality weapon they knew about that but bracelet was like ah i just use whatever which is what most you guys will do and i highly advise that you guys just use whatever just get the good combat stats don't worry about additional factors but let me go back about the boom what happened so that guy made a video but he just like upset that people rankers whales free to play everybody were not specking up their bracelets it's a good place in the hyper end game the gold to dps increase value was pretty up there you know the story of adam and eve adam and eve they ate the fruit of the forbidden knowledge and they ate it they're like hmm my bracelets suck ass Fuck, I'm missing like 12% damage that I could have got pretty cheap. And braces were cheap back then. But then after that video, it fucking spiked. And after that video, people understood how to even purchase relic bracelets, snag these good ones, two good combat stats, and then convert it into ancients. Those days are over because of that first video. And then a second video came out about how to get cheap bracelets and spec up your character. That second video looked at all the ways of getting a cheap bracelet. But now after that video, there's no more cheap bracelets. Everyone knows. If there is some way for someone to get something cheap and it's exposed, everyone knows about it and nothing becomes cheap anymore. The same thing I believe will happen to NAEU South America because of people like me. Now, after that, third video came out about why chase cheaper bracelets, just get the high ones, with high combat stats. If you're gonna spend 50K already, might as well just go a little bit more and spend 70K. So that if you do roll well, it turns into a super cracked bracelets. TLDR, bracelets are not cheap. Don't come in my chat, ask me, how much you think bracelets are gonna go for in NA East? I don't fucking know, man. Go Google your nearest fortune teller. Now, ancient bracelets have up to five options. Two are locked, or it could be one locked, and has either two empty slots or three empty slots. So max possibility of five. What about relic? It could be one locked with one bonus effect. That's the one you re-roll. You see that little swirly thingy? You could have two locks, one roll, one lock, two open. But in general, the max is gonna look like this. Two locked, two open, total of four. When you upgrade this to ancient using the vendor, it gives you one more open slot. The open slot will come with any random bonus and then you re-roll it. It has a limit though. I think you could re-roll it three times before it's dead. You do chaos dungeons, they'll drop, disassemble them. You get these little currencies and then with those currencies you could buy random bracelets it's really hard to get two good combat stats and three open slots they're expensive because it's rare so this one is a three open crit 62 strength 2700 the crit is too low so it's not gonna sell the strength is also pretty low 4000 and above is pretty nice that's gonna be like a completely different video man you need charts for that shit so you need a lot of silver if you're a whale just cutting this back to back to back if you are afraid to play or you don't want to chase bracelets 
bracelets? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's not gonna eat that much silver, okay? What are the options? In total, so if your bracelet came with like expertise, you're not gonna get expertise with specialization and crit. You're only gonna get two combat stats. I have crit already, that's locked, and I might get one of these. Specialization, swiftness, and the other three dog shit ones. Like some bracelets don't come with combat stats. So if you get those, you have to roll the combat stats onto them. For support, you could even go something like different. That was like the cheap route, but that's not cheap anymore. Once again, because of boom number two, video exposed like the cheap bracelets and nothing's cheap now. Now, outside of the combat stats, there are other bonus effects that are tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. Some classes a little bit different, but mostly about the same. And as you guys can see, these are the different options. You thought rock was bad. You have no fucking idea. So let me give you an example here. This is back attack. Increases back attack damage by 4%. So we call this middle, high, low end. Low end is 3% back attack damage. Middle is 3.5, 4%. Now, all the mega whales will tell you that these are not equal distribution. You're more likely to get the low range than the high range. If you even get the back attack do you understand why you will never get a perfect bracelet okay like this is like a tier three uwar two percent damage increase and then there are some where if you get two and they combine like yeolchong and nengjong so it's cold and warmth so cold is shit Warmth is great. This is tier one, 4% damage increase. Why is it shit, Zeus? When you're below 80% HP, you do extra damage. But when you combine them, they're good, man. And there are also support bracelets like this one, Yakjum Nochur. So it increases your whole raid, eight man. Eight man raids crit chance by 1.8, 2.1, 2.5. So this is a synergy support bracelet. I mean, you could get this as a damage dealer, but then that's not a cruel fighter behavior because you're effectively increasing your raise DPS, but lowering your DPS because it's taking up a slot of yours so you're helping johnny and bobby to get mvp so mostly in the end game we ask support to have one of these bisu this is also support bracelet this increases ama reduction by 2.5 percent it starts at 1.8 you're more likely to get these two than 2.5 but if you get like a support with a 2.5 you want to invite that guy right if he's a good player it's not gatekeeping it's just like that guy has a better stats you know it is what it is this is another tier one it's called hammer mangchi i have this one right here the mid one increases crit damage by 10 now you may be thinking as an entropy you already have a lot of crit damage so there are different dps increased distributions for me this is about like 3.6 percent depends on party synergy as well depends on your crit rate so that's why i have two bracelets i have one that is for crits right here this one gives me about eight percent crit this one gives me crit damage about 18 percent crit damage that's why i change it into a crit damage bracelet if i have some party synergy that gives crit Let's see. This is all shit, right? Bracelet can also kind of change your combat stats. So if you got like crit, like Solfus would love this. They love the crit. But Moon Reaper, if they get this, they're like, hmm, the crit that I'm getting from my necklace becomes less and less valuable because they're over crit capped. Your bracelets can kind of change your combat stats on your accessories as well. You can fix things around, tweak things around, like fine tuning your car. There's so many bad shit. KLDR, your chance of getting something good is low. <laughs> Going back to Uwar, this is kind of tier two, tier three territory. Why is that tier two, tier three zeals? Because there are ones that are better, like this one, Yeolchong. If your health is over 40%, which is pretty much always, right? If you're a good player, you do up to 4% damage. So the floor is higher, ceiling's higher. So this would be categorized into tier one. Now Sunhan is S tier. So if you have Sunhan with Yeolchong, these two together, you graduated because to replace that you need to spend thousands of dollars to replace that if you even have one as a free to play just take it and then be happy with it just move on you have to pursue gold efficiency for my damage right what's the best way to increase my character vertically getting just flat bracelets with two flat combat stats alone will boost your damage by five to seven percent already i don't want you guys as free to play just sit there cutting bracelets spending four million gold when you could have spent that four million gold elsewhere you Remember, there's like a list of what is the best gold to DPS increase value. Right now, for you guys, it's probably tripods and gems. Depending on where you're at, everyone's different. They will come for you guys when it's actually worth investing into bracelets. When we're talking about a vertical game, there's like nowhere else to really go. There comes a point where even 9-7 is kind of worth chasing for. Once you come back where bracelet is like worth it again, let's say you have a 5-6% to damage increase bracelet, you might want to jack that up to 12%. After you finish the checklist of like the most efficient upgrade, 
upgrades, he will come back to bracelets. And by then, we'll have ancient bracelets in the West. And hopefully, by then, there'll be more people farming these ancient bracelets and supplying them into the auction house. And then, like Korea now, try to chase two tier one bonuses. That's why I'm not making any videos about, oh, this is tier one. Because anything you get your hands on is pretty good. You guys have noticed that in Lost Ark. If a new system comes out, getting like 3%, 5% damage increase is relatively easy. I have a 12% to 13% damage increase bracelet, right? If I want to go to a 13, 14, 15, I need to be willing to spend thousands just for that little upgrade, right? Do you understand? The higher you go vertically, the more expensive it gets exponentially, right? So what I'm saying is this, you got to set up for something okay. Don't try to chase something like this. 113 crits, 112 specialization, the cap is 120 and 120, 240 combat stats. People are buying this. We call this a 220. What about a 230? Let's find it. That's a 230. Do you see why it's a 230? So rather than cutting this one, I'd rather cut this one if it's gonna be 1,000 gold difference. That's the logic. For me, look at my bracelet, 180 or 190. So when you look at a bracelet, right? The, what you need to know about Relic is that a perfect bracelet is 100 combat stat, 100, 100. Listen to me, nobody has perfect bracelets. Nobody has 100, 100 relic bracelets. Just let that fucking sink in. Please don't ask me. Have you ever seen a guy with the 10, 10 rock? Have you seen a guy with perfect bracelet? No, chill, fuck. You missing one or two combat stats? That's fine, bro. We can't even find one in the auction house. I just showed you guys. So first priority is combat stats. Why is combat stats important? Well, ask your class leader. Having enough specialization and swiftness, like there are breakpoints and you just want to hit those breakpoints. So combat stats coming from bracelets is the thing you should be aiming for, okay? Relic bracelets are 15 payons. Ancient is 20. So since you're gonna spend a lot of payons, sometimes it could be worth cutting this, even though it's smoge combat stats, that's the 90s, really low. Is it worth buying that? Or is it worth pursuing something around 140 range? That's gonna depend on the player. You wanna spend an extra 29,000 to gain 40 more combat stats. If it makes you hit a break point, maybe it's worth it. For some folks, they'll be like, hell nah, man. What the fuck? I'll just settle for the 500 Gs. Oh, let's go for something in the Hyper Whale territory. 90s, 180. You see the difference, guys, right? I remember, just because you buy this, doesn't mean you get a good bracelet in one try. On average, to get a trifecta or double fecta. Double fecta means two good bonuses to three bonuses. That's called a bracelet's graduation, where you cut a bracelet that increases your DPS by 12 to 15%. The combat stats alone, depending once again on your class and your spec, could be anywhere from five to 7% damage increase if you get the high combat stats. That is why the whales are cutting these high quality or very expensive bracelets. They're buying it because it's worth it for them because they're getting a higher floor coming from those two combat stats being that high just before even rolling it. Now, if they roll it with two double factors, like a tier one bonus, that could be right there, 14% damage increase. But the chance of that, like I said, is about on average 50 plus cuts. So 50 times 200,000 gold. There's not even 50 in the market. Let's roll something. I don't like to practice roll because I might get like triple S tier. That will fucking piss me off. It's like practicing a rock and it turns 9-7. But here we go for the video anyways. So what did I get? I have crit. I got swiftness. If my main combat stat is swiftness, you just lock it. Why? I can roll this three more times because it's ancient. How am I supposed to know I get swiftness again? You have to decide on your own. If you're feeling a little sexy and dangerous tonight, unlock it and roll it again. Maybe you get the perfect swiftness. Maybe you get 120. Maybe you get 115. Maybe you get 110. I don't know, but for me, I'm gonna lock it just to show you guys. And then up here, I got physical armor and max HP. That's garbage to me. And besides, it's something I got from Chaos Dungeon or from the exchange from those Chaos Dungeons. And I'm just spending some silver anyways. I'm gonna just go with it like this. Not losing anything. I didn't buy this with payons. Now, what did I get here? Max HP. You're gonna see a lot of max HP. These fucking good stats, they don't like you. They don't care about you, dude. Now, what is this? While in combat, recovers 50 HP. Man, what the f Okay, next. You see that the silver's wrapping up, right? Now, what did I get? If you're fighting a monster that's below level 60, basically Chaos Dungeon, they take 5% more damage. So basically, it's a Chaos Dungeon fucking bracelet. And this one's HP. 
basically dog shit that could be usable for you guys because i got the two combat stats i don't want you guys to go back to the auction house buy another one for 15 pound buy another one for 15 pound buy another one for 15 pound i don't even know what the gold cost is if you're paying 30k 40k 100k sitting there and cutting and come to my chat oh zeus i couldn't get a single good bonus effect told you it's not the time man combat stats is what you settle for first okay and if you're feeling sexy and dangerous maybe cut one that's the final product. It's still usable. It's very good. 87 swiftness, 62 crit, strength, 2700. You know, if this was a relic, it's pretty usable. It's still a damage increase. And I didn't spend anything but silver. All right, I'm going to grind them up. And then you get some back like that. You could exchange it here. All right. But what I need you guys to understand is that you can upgrade your relic bracelets using this. And you can see that stat changes as you go from relic to ancient. It'll show you what the stat differences are. Like how much your crit goes up, how much your swiftness goes up, how much your bonus effects goes up by. My bracelets give me about more than 12% damage. Now, I know there is like some new Loawa site that shows how much damage increased value a bracelet has. That site is garbage. Why? Because it doesn't factor in your rotation, your tripods. It just gives raw weight. However, if I have 1800 swiftness, from 1700 swiftness and above, each 10 points, 20 points, 100 points of swiftness gives different DPS value, that site doesn't factor that in. So you need to ask your respective class leaders how important the combat stats are and which combat stats are very important for your spec, for your class on your bracelets. For example, let's say you're playing a Surge Blade or you're playing a Transformation class. How much does 80 specialization give me? Does it make the cycle way better? The answer is yes, but um, you know, what's the minimal I could get away with? Obviously the more the merrier, but how much do I need? What's the minimum cutoff? So find those out. While it's pretty likely for you to get the combat stats, it's better to know your combat stats before you start rolling. I think that's better feeling. For example, let's say you play a class and you have 1690 swiftness. Let's say you need 80 more to hit like a break point. So I would get a bracelet with that combat stat. So that's 80 or above so that you're guaranteeing it instead of trying to roll that combat stat because that's just relying on RNG. That's just too much for me. The trade-off is the ones with the guaranteed combat stats like two factor right here, crit and swiftness. Those are going to cost a lot because they're in demand. Why is it in demand? Because it guarantees people are getting what they shop for instead of like, oh, I need swiftness. But if I get crit strength, I could get cheap bracelets. And then let's hope we get high swiftness by rolling over and over and over. You may get it, you may not. So you have to decide, do you want to get the cheaper one and try to roll the combat stat or just guarantee the two combat stats you want and then start rolling for the bonus effects. That is up to you and up to the price range of those bracelets, okay? That's like general introduction of bracelets.